Nicole, are you ready? Okay. Dan? You ready? Good evening, everyone. I'm going to call the meeting to order with a short prayer and a salute to our flag. <clears throat> Almighty God, grant us the wisdom to make those decisions that are in the best interest of all of our residents. May the Heavenly Father of us all bless those who have given the ultimate sacrifice in service to our nation, and may he watch over and protect our service men and women now guarding the gates of freedom. Salute to our flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Jessica, statement of publication, please. Take notice at this regular agenda meeting of the Mayor and Borough Council being held on this 19th day of August 2024 has been posted and advertised in accordance with Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231, Public Law 1975. Roll call. Council Persons Balka. Here. Lucy. Here. Noha. Roberts. Here. Sinarski. Here. Zabrowski. Okay, uh, Council President, approval of the prior minutes. I move the following minutes of the mayor and council be approved on roll call vote, subject to correction if necessary. And okay. that would include um, July 15th special and executive meetings and the July 15th regular agenda session. Second. Council Persons Roberts. Yes. Falca. Yes. Polisi. Yes. Sinarski. Yes. Okay, now we have the proclamation. Okay, Council President, if you would. I have a proclamation to read today. Whereas more than 8 million people in the U.S. are living with chronic wounds, lack of awareness of advanced wound care and benefits of hyperbaric oxygen therapy leaves many people without access to life-changing care. Whereas hyperbaric oxygen therapy, or HBOT, is a proven treatment for wounds, infections, or injuries that have not responded to standard treatment. There are currently 15 indications for HBOT recognized by the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, CMS, and other third-party payers. Whereas hyperbaric oxygen therapy is most used for the treatment of diabetic ulcers of lower extremities, radiation injury to bone or tissue, compromised grafts and flaps, and chronic refractory osteomyelitis. Whereas cancer is the second leading cause of death in the United States of the 18 million people diagnosed with cancer in the US, about half of them have received radiation therapy. Whereas many patients who undergo radiation therapy discover a hidden complication that may not come to light until years after they complete treatments. Radiation therapy can restrict oxygen in the body's healthy tissue, which is needed for the tissue to thrive. If there is a break in the integrity of the tissue, infection and non-healing wounds can occur. About 15% of patients who undergo radiation therapy may develop late radiation tissue injury. Whereas hyperbaric oxygen therapy has emerged as a treatment option for patients who suffer from late radiation tissue injury, HBOT helps patients by stimulating growth of new blood vessels following radiation-induced damage whereas over 37 million people in the U.S. have diabetes, and 25% of them will develop a foot ulcer, possibly leading to amputation. Hyperbaric oxygen therapy provides necessary oxygenation, which is critical in preventing amputation. Whereas Hyperbaric Awareness USA and the Hyperbaric Aware Campaign aim to spread national, statewide, and local awareness of available treatment options for people suffering from radiation injury, chronic wounds, and diabetes, thus prolonging lives, avoiding amputations, and reducing the cost of care and improving quality of life. Now, therefore, on behalf of Mayor Kennedy O'Brien and the Several Borough Council, I hereby acknowledge Hyperbaric Awareness Month. Thank you. Is there a motion to I accept the proclamation? I make a motion to accept the proclamation. There's a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Council President. Thank you, Mayor. There being nothing for executive session, we'll move to uh, old business.
Public hearing on bond ordinance number 34-24, bond ordinance providing for acquisition of various vehicles and equipment by and in the borough of Sarville in the county of Middlesex, state of New Jersey, appropriating $3,360,000 therefore and authorizing the issuance of $3,192,000 bonds or notes of the borough to finance part of the cost thereof. This time I'm going to open the public portion for comments on this ordinance. Are there any comments? Mary? Mary Novak, one Scarlet Drive. It's actually a question. Is this for all vehicles throughout the whole town or just specific departments? I did look into it, Mayor, if I may. No. Um, unfortunately, I did, my printer broke. I was going to bring the list, and it um, outlines in detail what those But it's, it's all departments. Mary, Mary, we'll, we'll get you the variety. list. Okay. I just okay. wanted to just not one department. Okay. I don't think we'd include Thank water because it's a separate... Water is separate. Waters would be separate because it's a different budget. It's a different. Okay, next item. Are there any other comments on this bond ordinance? Being no other, no other comments, uh, we'll move to the next. Uh, I move the public hearing. Hand. I move the public hearing be closed. The ordinance adopted on second and final reading and advertised according to law. Second. Roll call. Council persons, Balka. Yes. Polisi. Yes. Roberts. Yes. Sonarski. Yes. Public hearing on bond ordinance 35-24, bond ordinance providing for various 2024 general capital improvements by and in the borough of Sarville in the county of Middlesex, state of New Jersey, appropriating $1,780,000, therefore, and authorizing the issuance of $1,691,000 bonds or notes of the borough to finance part of the cost thereof. This time we're going to open the public portion for comments on this ordinance. Are there any comments? Being no comments, I'll entertain a motion. Councilman Balka. Move the public hearing be closed. The ordinance adopted on second and final reading and advertised according to law. Second. Roll call. Council persons Balka. Yes. Lucy. Yes. Roberts. Yes. Sonarski. Yes. Public hearing on bond ordinance 36-24. Bond ordinance providing for various park improvements by and in the borough of Sarville in the county of Middlesex, state of New Jersey, appropriating $720,000, therefore, and authorizing the issuance of $684,000 bonds or notes of the borough to finance part of the cost thereof. This time I'll open uh, public comment on uh, for comments. Jim? Thank you, Mayor. Jim Robinson from Parlin. This ordinance appropriates $700,000. $20,000 for park improvements, things such as lighting, fuel lighting, site demolition, restoration, um, buildings, ball fields, things, all good things. I support all of this. Are any of these things that would be covered by the capital review section of the land use law 4055D-31? And what that basically says is before the municipality spends money on a capital project such as this, and we have precedent when we've installed lighting in parks and things. They've gone before the planning board so the public can know what the plan is and to comment. And the reason, first I want to know is, would these things come under, come under that? I mean, I know the answer to that question, but I'm asking on the record. And the reason I ask that is we are currently in litigation with the Board of Education and one of the issues that we have with the Board of Education, or maybe they're in litigation with us, I guess it's a matter of opinion. Um, and my opinion is they're in litigation with us. Um, on the bus depot, and one of the issues is that they did not, despite being told many times, they did not go before the planning board as a condition precedent, they did eventually when they were dragged in um, for capital review under 4555D-31. Mm -hmm. And I think this has to go, I support this, but at some point in time, it has to go before the planning board. And I think that if the Board of Education were to know that we were violating that provision, which is an important provision of the land use law, that it might be a defense um, for why they didn't go before the planning board for capital review. So that's my question. And I, and I support this. I, I support all of these things. Our, look at our parks. You know that they have to be upgraded. That's my question. Any other comments? Yes, my comment is I would like an answer to my question. 
You'll have to call in the morning. I'll have to call? This is for three minutes for comments. Okay, so for during this public hearing, I can't ask a question, get an answer to it. We passed an ordinance some time ago, okay. Jim. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Are there any other questions on this ordinance? Robert? Bob Duffy, 111 Merritt Avenue. Uh, comment is my wife would probably be very happy seeing that we're spending some money in the parks. Uh, the other thing is that uh, she suggested a while back that maybe we can get a committee together to go over the parks and see, she spoke to Michael about it and getting a few people in the town that are not politicians get together mm -hmm. and try to do the best what we get for our money in the parks. Thank you. Thanks, Robert. Any other questions or comments rather on this ordinance? Being no other comments, I'll entertain a motion. Councilman Balka. With public hearing, we close the ordinance adopted on second and final reading and advertised according to law. Roll call. Councilpersons Balka. Yes. Lucy. Yes. Noha. Yes. Roberts. Yes. Sonarski. Yes. Public hearing on bond ordinance number 37-24, bond ordinance providing for various roadway improvements by and in the borough of Saville in the county of Middlesex, state of New Jersey, appropriating $6,500,000 therefore, and authorizing the issuance of $6,175,000 bonds or notes of the borough to finance part of the cost thereof. This time I'll open the public portion for comments on this ordinance. Are there any comments? Being no comments, I'll entertain a motion. Councilman Belka. Move the public hearing be closed. The ordinance adopted on second and final reading and advertised according to law. Second. Council Persons Balka. Yes. Felici. Yes. Noha. Yes. Roberts. Yes. Sonarski. Yes. Public hearing on ordinance number 38-24, bond ordinance providing for various water utility improvements by and in the borough of Saville in the county of Middlesex, state of New Jersey, appropriating $7,635,000, therefore, and authorizing the issuance of $7,635,000 in bonds or notes to finance the cost thereof. Uh, at this time, I'll open the public portion for comments on this ordinance. Are there any comments? Being no comments, I'll entertain a motion. Move the public hearing be closed. The ordinance adopted on second and final reading and advertised according to law. Second. A uh, roll call. Councilpersons Balka. Yes. Felici. Yes. Noha. Yes. Roberts. Yes. Sonarski. Yes. Appointments. Okay. At this time, I'm going to appoint Jeff Schnitzer to the Cerebral Cultural uh, Cultural Arts uh, Society. I need a motion to accept that. I make a motion to accept the appointment. Is there a second? Second. Roll call. Councilpersons Roberts. Yes. Balka. Yes. Colisi. Yes. Noha. Yes. Sonarski. Yes. Introduction of the following ordinance, ordinance number 39-24, an ordinance supplementing and amending ordinance 40-23, fixing the salaries of certain borough officials, officers, and employees for the years 2023 to 2027. Councilman Balka. Would the ordinance be approved on first reading, advertised according to law, and a public hearing be held on 9-9-24? Second. Roll call. Councilpersons Balka. Yes. Colisi. Yes. Anoha. Yes. Roberts. Yes. Sonarski. Yes. Ordinance number 40-24, an ordinance amending and supplementing chapter five of the revised general ordinances of the borough of Saville to amend section 5-5.6 A and B political signs. Uh, Councilman Anoha. Yes, thank you, Senior Mayor. I move the ordinance be approved on first reading, advertised according to law, and a public hearing to be held on September 9th, 2024. Second. Roll call. Councilpersons Anoha. Valka. Yes. Polisi. Yes. Roberts. Yes. Sonarski. Yes. Ordinance number 41-24, an ordinance amending and supplementing chapter 26 of the revised general ordinances of the borough of Saville to amend section 26-89.8, signed schedule one and two, signed permit, revocable. Councilman uh, Balka filling in for Councilman Zabrowski. Will the ordinance be approved on first reading, advertised according to law, and a public hearing be held on 9 9 2024? Second. Roll call. Councilpersons Balka. Yes. Felici. Yes. Noha. Yes. Roberts. Yes. Sonarski. Yes. Okay. Um, resolutions. At this time, I'll open the public portion. 
for comments on the resolution. Are there comments? Being no comments, I'll entertain a motion. Council President. I move the public hearing be closed and the consent agenda resolutions be approved on roll call vote. Second. Roll call. Council Persons Roberts. Yes. Falca. Yes. Halusi. Yes. Anoha. Yes. Tanarski. Yes. I need a motion to accept the correspondence as listed. So moved. Is there, uh, is second. there a uh, second? Second. Roll call. Council Persons Roberts. Yes. Falca. Yes. Polisi. Yes. Anoha. Yes. Sinarski. Yes. Okay. Mayor and Council reports. Uh, administration and Finance, Councilman Balka. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, not much to say, but progress, Mayor. Okay. Planning and zoning. Would you do that, uh, Dan, please? Yep. There's progress there, and our next planning board meeting is scheduled for Wednesday, 821 at 730. Okay. Thank you. Uh, public safety, Councilman Anoha. Thank you, esteemed mayor. Uh, special thanks to those who continuously support our borough at our events, even most recently with our public safety. Uh, no additional updates to that, esteemed mayor. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, public Works, Councilman Kalesi. Uh Parks is working on putting a new gate up at Bailey's Park, and sanitation was there also cleaning up all the uh, illegal dumping. Uh, the road department's been doing the tree trimming, filling potholes, removing dead animals from the roadway and trying to keep up with the stormwater issues. So buildings and grounds uh, has been keeping up with their building complaints. And lastly, uh, all divisions will be starting to get their snow removal equipment um, maintained and ready for the new season. And also we had, uh, you know, through the uh, events of National Night Out, and in our upcoming events uh, with the Saraville Day and everything, I mean, the parks and our whole DPW, the men and women have been doing a great job and uh, keep up the good work, guys. That's all I have. Thank you. Recreation, Councilman Sinarski. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, last Tuesday, the 813, we had our night out down at the Veterans Park. It was a lot of people. It was a good time, I believe, had by all. We met a lot of nice people. A lot of people had nice comments. We listened to people as they spoke. Uh, Farmer's Market, the 22nd and 29th of August. And we got something new coming up this Friday. It's called Teen Night. It's going to be at Berks Park. There's going to be some activities for teenagers. They got to sign up at, and be able to come to that. And uh, we still have one more car show. It's a couple more car shows on... Uh, the 28th of August also. Thank you, Mary. That's it. Thank you. Uh, water and sewer council president. Thank you, mayor. Um, just a couple highlights from water. July, we um, produced 229.11 million gallons of water and had 478 work orders. So a lot of work going on over there. And I just want to thank Chief Plumacher for following up on a couple of issues. First, um, he got received a JCP and L update. Um, so he has shared that, I believe, with the residents that had requested that. And he also provided a road report for another interested um, resident on the Cheesequake Bordentown intersection. And um, it looks like that intersection is flowing as it's intended. So I want to thank him for all that work. Anything progress. else, Council President? No, progress. Thank you. Uh, business Administrator's report? Oh, I'm sorry. General discussion items. Uh, application for social affair permits received from American Legion uh, to s serve beer and wine at the football tailgate party on September 15th from 1130 a.m. to 7 p.m. And the Cerville PBA Local 98 to s serve beer and wine at their Oktoberfest on September 28th from 12 to 5 p.m. at St. Stan's Carnival Grounds. Are there any objections? Next item. Authorization for the tax collector to refund 2024 taxes and cancel all, all subsequently billed taxes due to 100% disabled veterans tax exemption, 20 Eugene Boulevard, in the amount of $2,599.96, and 43 East Cup Street, in the amount of $3,352.92. Are there any objections? Next item. Authorization to award a contract to Dell Marketing for Microsoft licenses through NJ State contract in an amount not to exceed 19000 
Any objections? Next item. Authorization to sell one Ingersoll Rand 2475 air compressor to SHS Auto Sports in Sarable for 1000 Are there any objections? Next item. Uh, request to travel received from Engine Company, Melrose, and President Park to attend the New Jersey State Firemen's Convention from September 12th to 15th in Wildwood. Any objections? Question. Next. Could I have a quick question? Go ahead. Morgan is not listed. Did they not ask for permission to go or they're not sending a truck? I, I'm just going to. Usually they bring a truck. But, but Morgan isn't listed. Are they not going? I don't What's that? Morgan Firehouse isn't listed. I'm just wondering if there's a reason. The only... They didn't They didn't ask then probably. That's why. That's the what I got from the chief. So. Okay. No problem. No question. Okay. Okay. Are there any objections? Next item. Application for membership as a firefighter for Thomas Alfrey accepted by Cerebral Engine Company at their August 5th, 2024 meeting. Any objection? Next item. Authorization to award a contract to Motorola Solutions for the annual maintenance of the Vesta 911 system through NJ State contract in an amount not to exceed $55,687. Dollars. Any objection? Next item. Authorization to award a contract to fire and safety services per for preventative maintenance and repairs of fire apparatus through source well contract in an amount not to exceed $57,600. Any, ob any objection? Next item. Authorization to award a contract to tactical public safety for 2024 radio and pager maintenance through NJ state contract in an amount not to exceed $80,250.09. Any objection? Uh, request received from residents of Page Terrace to hold a block party on September 14th from 12 p.m. to 6 p.m. Any objection? Next item. Um, application for special event received um, from, to hold a car show at St. Stan's and school grounds on October 27th, 2024 from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. Any objection? Next item. Authorization to award a contract to Ferguson for the purchase of six water bottle fill stations through ESCNJ contract in an amount not to exceed $25,811.75. Any objection? Uh, aut item. Authorization to award a contract to KC sign and awning for the purchase of three LED signs through ESCNJ contract in an amount not to exceed $110,000. Any objection? And it's on Glenn. That's it. Okay. Business Administrator's Report. Authorization to appoint Matthew Mishevitz to laborer one part-time in the Department of Public Works, effective September 1st, 2024. Any objection? Next item. Authorization to appoint Darren Gorsica and Joseph Siglinski to laborer one full-time in the Water and Sewer Department, effective September 1st. Any objection? Yes, Mayor. I just need to abstain on Darren Gorsica. That's all. Next item. Uh, request received from Clinton Row mechanic for an unpaid leave effective July 29th in order to attend the police academy. Any objection? And I'm going to handle Denise's. All here. right. CFO's report. Uh, authorization to amend the 2024 local municipal budget for the following. Opioid settlement, $36,079.67. Thank you. Our engineer's report. Thank you, Mayor. One item, Lemaire Section 6. The site work has been completed. They requested a bond release of recommending a resolution releasing the bonds subject to posting the required maintenance bonds. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, borough Attorney? Report. Okay. All right. This time I'll open the public portion for comments on all issues. Frank? Okay. Thank you. Frank Terzino, 32 Canal Street, Serval, New Jersey, President Serval. So historical society. I, like to share I can't something. hear you, Frank. When you when you move from the microphone, we lose you. Okay. How's that any better? Yes, thank you. Okay. Uh, Frank Chuzino, 32 Canal Street, Cerebral, New Jersey, President, Cerebral Historical so Society. I'd like to give you some highlights to the governing body and to our uh, to our residents about some of the things we've been doing. Uh, August 8th, 9th, and 10th, three loyal and dedicated volunteers of our society on our own dime, visited the National Archives in Washington, D.C. and College Point, Maryland. We were researching the T.A. Gillespie munitions plant, loading plant, uh, also the Morgan explosion, October 4th, 1918 at 7.33 p.m. We expected some newspaper clippings, maybe a document or a couple photographs. We were amazed to find hundreds of documents and photographs, reports and interviews by agents of the Secret Service, military, and civilian investigators. 
indicate indicators of lost my spot. Indicators of accidental and sabotage were very evident. Hundreds were interviewed, and one that sticks to mind is Henry Van Erp. I think I got his name wrong, but that's what I'm going with. Uh, he reported off the day of the explosion. They investigated him, his family, even his dog, and they found out his real name was Henrik Von Erp. Was there Rush, uh, German uh, sympathy? Who knows? They found cigarette butts in the nearby buildings. Uh, the inspection two weeks earlier of the explosion, they had faulty heat, uh, temperature gauges in the kettle room building, which is building 611. The first explosion occurred. They mixed the ingredients together. It was an explosion. Also, a whistleblower came forward and said the uh, fire systems were not maintained and not functioning properly. Conspiracy? Who knows? The first explosion could have been extinguished, and the second and third explosions, 15, 20 minutes later, may have not happened at all. I'd also like to share another one here real quick. I know I had a couple of seconds here. If you, uh, July 19th, 2021, four loyal and dedicated volunteers on our own dime videotaped and interviewed several hometown World War II hero, 100-year-old veteran who wrote a book, Into the Cold Blue. Lieutenant John Holman of College Point, PA. Uh, Mr. Holman grew up in Cerville. Can you please give me a couple seconds? This right. is really cool. Um, Mr. Holman grew up in Henry Street. He listened to the Army Air Corps, flew 34 missions. He got this Distinguished Flying Cross. When asked what was his most scared mission, he goes, the last one. Uh, towards the end of the war, he, his missions were to drop supplies. He had to fly down around 500 feet or lower uh, in his B-24. He was shot at with flak. He lost an engine and part of his tail. The B-24 has two, two tails. This is his book cover. And uh, his navigator, he says, was shot in the ass. <laughs> He's, he's one hell of a character. Um, but they landed safely and he came home. As a youngster, John and his friends were playing in the yard on Henry and Washington Road, dug up a uh, military shell. Was it T.A. Gillespie? We don't know. So they brought it to the garage and they were, in his quote, we were banging on a damn thing. And uh, dad walks in and he goes, stop. Dad calls the police. Sarah had a bomb expert, went to the site. Uh, it was real. The Army came and disposed of it. And those are two things that we're, we're doing a lot of good stuff. But I think the council and the membership and uh, the, the uh, residents, you know, we're doing some really good stuff. And we have Operation Snow Cone, which I can get to next meeting. Thank you. Thank you for your work, Frank. Thank you for the extra time. Appreciate it. You should really have four minutes at least. Okay. Are there any other comments? Mary? Mary Novak, One Scarlet Drive. This may be unnecessary because I heard Dan and Jessica talking. The two ordinances re uh, referring to signs. They both say 45 days, but one says they have to be down in three days, and one says they have to be down at midnight of the Saturday after. So one of these is going to have to be corrected before they're voted in the next time. Just, just thought I mentioned that, uh, but I heard you guys talking. Uh, I would like to speak about the, the uh, building next door. Um, I think that the, uh, the question is a little bit deceptive in that, is there any way we can add wording to that or is it too late? Because it should be put in there that most, if not all of this money could, should, and would be supported by grants so that it wouldn't be coming, although it all comes out of the taxpayers' pockets one way or the other. There are so many grants out there. I've noticed not that long ago, Woodbridge declared one of their buildings Historical Society and South Amboy did it for one of their firehouses just last week, I believe. It really is so important. And if, if we're not going to fix it, what are the plans? Do we have any plans at all? Are we going to tear it down? I mean, we can't just leave it sit there. So, and I know 
you don't have to answer questions right now, but I really like you to consider if you can please add that to the resolution. And also maybe we could give the historical society when they have something to present like that, a special time to just present it and they wouldn't have to be tied to the three minutes in the public portion. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. Jim. Thank you, Jim Robinson from Parlin. The council asked for appraisals on the 40 acres adjacent to Kennedy Park with the intention of preserving that property as open space. The appraisals have come in. Has the council received those appraisals? You're here for comments, Jim. Okay. Well, they can shake their head. if they, the, the council can respond, Mayor, if they want to. Um, I, I thought that perhaps they wouldn't be shared with the council. The word is that, Mayor, you don't want to preserve that property and you want instead homes to be built there. And that's why that appraisal, which was asked for 10 months ago, Donna, you were in on that, wasn't shared. And if that's not the case, please tell me. Um, I want to thank Chief Plumacher for staying on top of the streetlight situation. Matt, I know you tried to help the business administrator uh, did something with respect to that, but the chief was able to get some things done. We very much appreciate that three, 300 have been fixed since then. Councilman Sinarski, you talked about the recreation department sponsoring teen night on Friday at Berks Park. That's a wonderful thing for rising high school students, whatever that means. You didn't mention that it's $15 a kid. Now, as all of you probably know, Cerville is a Title I school district which means for at least 40%, and it is higher than 40% of our, fam our kids come from families that are low income. And I think when we have a program like this, um, that it, we ought not to charge kids. Now I called the recreation department twice today to speak to the director to see if I could donate some money to pay for maybe uh, 10 kids. I know some other people I've spoke, spoken to would also like to do that. The, and I'm happy to do that and I'll follow up with him. The bigger picture is this, you have to revisit that. You have to revisit whether or not the recreation department should be charging $15 for kids to go to a program that has sponsors, by the way. Did the council approve that? I know in the last few months, the council has raised fees two, maybe three times, I'm not sure, um, but at least twice on recreation programs. Did the council approve this $15 fee? Okay, I forgot you're not gonna answer. Well, in any case, I hope you would take a look at that. I mentioned this to some folks. I got a lot of feedback. We, we are a Title I, the, the, the state calls us a DE district. Um, so I think we ought to do that. Um, you know, we're getting $20 million for the property on Journey Mill Road. I don't think we're hurting. I don't think we're hurting. I think we, uh, we ought to do that. And one last question, in exchange for, or in connection with the pilot, did anybody suggest that of those 46 acres, maybe five of them could be used for a bus depot? That would solve a problem that we have, that would save us millions of dollars, and that might end a very costly and unfortunate lawsuit. I'm sorry, Councilman Zabrowski isn't here. Maybe he could weigh in on that, but did anybody ask Thanks, Jim. Did anybody ask thank if, you, Jim. if the school bus thank, depot thank could be you, accommodated Jim. on that property on Journey Mill Road thank, in as much as we are going you, to be Jim. giving them a pilot? Thank you, Did Jim. Did anybody ask that question? Jim, if you're going to keep this up, then I'm just not going to call on you anymore. If you can't follow the rules, it's, right. it's not worth my time to have the police come. And, We're not here for your benefit, uh, Mayor. Jim, We're here for the benefit of the people of Cerville who have questions Jim, that they would down. like to have answers sit to. Sit down, Jim. You don't care about the bus behave people, yourself. but the residents and taxpayers behave do, Behave yourself, Jim. The young couple that just came in, this is the portion where you'd make a statement if you have an issue you want to bring to the council's chamber. So if the two of you want to come up, this is the time to do it. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Hirsch. My wife's name is Juhi. Um, Could I get your names and your address, please? My name is Hirsch. Her name is Juhi, and uh, we are from Town Lake West. Okay. Um, sorry. Now, there's a three-minute limit sure. for comments. Now, uh, 
Okay. Got it. Go ahead. So we are here on behalf of Town Lake West, and I'm sorry for being late because oh, no. we came it's from okay. work. Um, so we just wanted to bring a few things uh, we discussed uh, with our homeowners. So I'm also one of the HOA press uh, 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 members. And a uh, few things that, you know, going back and forth, because we come to you, people from Town Lake West come to us for, with their questions and concern, yep. right? So we are responsible for, to answer their questions. So uh, we raised a few times that, you know, on uh, on Wisconsin Road and throughout the like Town Lake West, we have a parking issue, speed limit issue. We have seen recently on Town Lake East, the other side of the lake, uh, you have installed the speed limit sign and we have requested, we signed the petitions from all the homeowners and we have not seen that been installed yet. Uh, I all personally. Right. So if you can, I assume you have other things, but if we can get your contact information before you sit down, we'll have someone call you tomorrow and give you an update on where we are with the requests that you put Absolutely. in. Absolutely, we'll give it to you, no worries. Okay. Uh, and I also reach out to uh, some of the members here, yeah. uh, not myself maybe, because a uh, few people have some celebrations going on uh, due to summer, so we came here on behalf of them. So parking issues uh, from the other side of the like you know, new development from Camelot, and the other is the the... Um, Existing the uh, Camelot. the Camelot and also the some speed uh, limit signs. If either, if you guys can install that, would be great. So it would be great for our community. Yep. And uh, we also would like to. I see there was a, a, a public work under public work section. There was a request to block the te page terrace uh, on September 14 between 12 to 6. It has been approved for the block party because we came late. So it yeah. was yes, one of the agenda. that was approved. Okay, because I wanted to answer those things too. Uh, and one last thing that we wanted to uh, add to this time is, uh, I know there was uh, some concerns from the other uh, homeowners in our community about the insula insulation of the trees on their backyard, uh, which I was told that, you know, uh, someone from the uh, town reach out to them and they said they're gonna install it in a, in a early uh, fall. Right. So just want to make sure that also been it's on schedule. Awesome. Okay, so that's all we wanted to discuss. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay. That's this fella here. This is Glenn. Okay, thank you, Ken. Ken Olszewski, uh, several. Probably about 10 things I could talk about uh, this evening uh, that I think are, are cruel, undemocratic things that have gone on here since the first of the year. But the one I chose in the limited time I have is what you've done to the historic society, how you've taken and, and put your thumb into the eye of the people of the historical society, who many are pillars of this community. Um, they ask for a historical designation for this building next door. They never asked to spend any money. You decided, you decided that there should be a referendum. It's strange because there was no referendum on any of these other unpopular things, giving away a hundred million dollars in tax breaks to the warehouses on uh, Minnesink and Cheesequake giving away at the last meeting a tax break to uh, the uh, uh, the club here where they're going to now build. Uh, never any referendum on that, but you wanted a referendum on this. And then you told them you would work with them. We were here. We heard that. And you know what? There's no kind way to say this, but you lied. Uh, the President Frank came up here and said, he never heard a word from you people on it. You simply lied. Councilman Sonarski said your backs were to the wall. What backs were to the wall? This went on for months. I don't know what he's talking about. You know, he talks at the end when, when the public can't get back up. And then he said he can't see the borough funding the building. Nobody asked him to. But of course now, since he voted for the referendum, obviously he's, uh, he's against the referendum because it says he spent three, can spend $3 million. So the 
the deal that we talk about here is how cruel you've been, how you've lied to these people who are trying to do good things for the community. Frank just talked about some of the great uh, things they went down on their own time to Washington and, and reviewed. And you continue to lie, you continue to cheat, and you continue to take money from the borough treasurer, not a little money, millions and millions of dollars, and give it to the big people in town, to your friends, the multi-billion B dollar corporations. Thank you very much. Are there any other comments, Bob? Bob Duffy, 111 Merritt Avenue. Uh, I was here in March and I asked the council at that time uh, to look into a new ordinance about fines and money owed on property when they're going to the board, planning board, zoning board. Uh, I think, uh, I don't think he's chaired it, even spoke about it. I'm bringing it up again, hoping that you can at least look at it, think about it. It's a revenue source. It's uh, because I had, I had an incident I, I was involved in and there was fines owed on the property. And he came to the planning board and tried to get the planning board to okay it so he wouldn't be out of in, it'd be in compliance when he was out of compliance. So I don't know if you can make an amendment to an uh, uh, now or have a whole new ordinance or make an amendment to an ordinance that even fines have to be paid before you go in front of any boards. And I don't think it's unconstitutional if you have to have your tax, ta uh, taxes in, in line to go in front of a board. I think you should have all your fines. You know, there's, there's a big fine in town now with, with, the plan, with, with an application with the planning board. You ain't never going to see that money. Once they get approved, they're done. So just think about it. Share it. I, I, if you could just add an amendment to what you have, it may be good revenue in town. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. Uh, are there any other uh, comments? You can only come up once, Frank. It was multiple times. You can only do it once during the period. That's right. it, it's, it's, it's the ordinance that was passed. Uh, are there any other comments? Being there are no other comments, I'll entertain a motion to close the public portion. I make a motion to close the public portion. Is there a second? Second. Roll call. All in favor. All in favor. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Take a motion for adjournment. Make a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Thank you, everyone.